Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget-friendly standard or modern decks, and this week we're taking a look at Mono Green Stompy in Modern, an aggressive creature deck that tries to close out the game with Rancors and Pump Spells. So let's take a look at our entire list, starting out with our 1-drop creatures, where we have 4 copies of Experiment 1, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one creature with Evolve, so whenever a creature with power or toughness greater than Experiment 1's enters a battlefield, we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Experiment 1, so the perfect turn 1 play as it'll grow whenever we play a larger creature which is the goal in the deck to curve out nicely with large creatures and we can also remove two plus one plus one counters from experiment one to regenerate it which can be useful in the face of a sweeper effect Next up we have 4 copies of Dried Militant, a 1 mana 2 1 creature, and if an instant or sorcery card would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So that's very useful against Snapcaster Mage decks and other decks that utilize the graveyard. And we also have a 1 of copy of Kassik Prowler to round out our 1 drop creatures as another 1 mana 2 1, and for 5 mana we can transform Kassik Prowler into Sinuous Predator, which is a 4 4 that can be blocked by more than one creature. So a nice ability to have for the late game and a 1 mana 2 1 is perfectly serviceable already. Then at 1 mana we also have 4 copies of Aspect of Hydra, which is a 1 mana instant that gives target creature plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is our devotion to green, and our devotion to green is calculated by adding up all the green mana symbols on the creatures we control, so that can add up very quickly since we have a lot of double green and triple green cards in our deck, and we also get to add up the green mana symbols of enchantments like Rancor, so we can quickly deal a lot of damage with Aspect of Hydra, making it an excellent finisher in our deck. We also have the four copies of Rancor, which I just mentioned, a one mana enchantment that goes onto one of our creatures, giving it plus two plus O and trample. And the nice part is that when Rancor is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we get to return a Rancor to our hand instead. So even if your opponent manages to deal with our creature that has a Rancor on it, we still get our Rancor back to enchant a future creature. Do have to be careful if our opponent kills the creature we're trying to enchant with Rancor in response before the Rancor actually enters the battlefield, then Rancor will not go back to our hand since it never entered the battlefield in the first place. So have to be careful when we cast our Rancor. But to help us protect our creatures, we also have 4 copies of Vines of Vastwood, which is a 1 mana instant that also has Kicker for just a single green, and target creature can be the target of spells or abilities our opponents control until end of turn, and if the Kicker cost was paid, then that creature also gets plus 4 plus 4 until end of turn, so most of the time we're just using Vines of Vastwood as a pump spell, giving our creature plus 4 plus 4 for 2 mana, but sometimes we can also use it to protect our creature for just a single mana, and of course the best case scenario is where our opponent tries to kill the creature in our turn, so we get to save it with Vines of Vastwood and give it plus 4 plus 4, so it can get in for more damage. And our final 1 drop is 2 copies of Dismember, which we're always going to pay 4 life for, since we don't have any black mana in our deck, giving target creature minus 5, minus 5 and on of turn, giving us access to a great removal spell in mono green. Moving on to our 2 drops, we have 2 copies of Scavenging Ooze, 2 mana 2-2 two, two creature, for a single green mana we can exile a card from a graveyard, and if that card was a creature we gain 1 life and get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Scavenging Ooze, so it gives us a nice little bit of late game against opposing creature decks if some creatures trade it off, and otherwise can be some nice interaction against graveyard decks. Then we have 4 copies of Avatar of the Resolute, double green for a 3-2 with Reach and Trample, and Avatar enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each other creature we control that has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so synergizes nicely with an Experiment 1 that has a few counters on it, and we also have a Scavenging Ooze that could accumulate a plus 1 plus 1 counter, other copies of Avatar could have a counter on it, and we also have Strangle Root Geist, which we'll get to in a second, which might also end up with a plus 1 plus 1 counter. But just a 3-2 with Reach and Trample is sometimes good enough, and also the double green casting cost means it synergizes very nicely with Aspect of Hydra. And we just mentioned Strangle Root Geist, which is our next creature, double green for a 2-1 with Haste and Undying, and Undying means that if Strangle Root Geist dies, if it did not have a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, then it goes from the graveyard back onto the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, making it into a 3-2, and a pretty resilient threat against removal heavy decks, which is nice. Then moving on to our 3 drops, we have 2 copies of Dungrove Elder, which is a 3 mana star star with Hexproof, and Dungrove Elder's power and toughness is equal to the number of forests we control, and our mana base consists of 19 basic forests, so Dungrove Elder is often going to be very large, and makes her a great recipient for Rancors and other pump spells, thanks to Hexproof. 
And then last but not least, we have four copies of Steel Leaf Champion, a new addition from Dominaria, triple green for a 5-4, and Steel Leaf Champion can be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, so can be chum blocked by smaller creatures, then 5 power is great for helping us grow experiment ones, and the triple green casting cost means that Aspect of Hydra is going to be a lot more powerful as well. Then going over the mana base, we've already mentioned 19 basic forests, and we also have two copies of Treat of Village to complement those, which is a land that can turn into a 3-3 creature with Trample, which is also an excellent threat. Then taking a look at our sideboard, we have two copies of Gutshot when we need some cheap removal spells to deal with 1 toughness creatures, two Relic of Progenitus against Graveyard decks, two Natural State as a cheap disenchant effect for artifacts or enchantments, two Torpor Orbs mainly for the Humans matchup, two Feed the Clan against Burn, 3 Damping Sphere against Tron and Storm decks and other combo decks, 1 Choke against the blue control decks, and a Creeping Corrosion as another way to deal with multiple artifacts at once. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. And this hand is tempting because of the Dungrove Elder with 4 forests, but if we don't draw a 1 or a 2 drop, then this hand is glacially slow for modern. So I don't know if we can actually keep this one, I think we'll go to 6. Alright, this is much better. A nice 1, 2, 3 curve. And we'll bottom the forest. Opponent cycles Street Wraith. Plays a bobble, so it looks like a Grixis Shadow deck. Alright, Rancor not a bad pickup. Let's lead with Experiment 1, say go. Opponent fetches for untapped Blood Crypts and bolts our Experiment 1. Cycles another Street Wraith. So a large Death Shadow could definitely be an issue for us, but if our opponent goes low enough, where we can maybe go wide and finish them off with a pump spell, then we can punish them for going so low. Opponent with a lot of drawing and discarding here. They don't have a ton of cards left, but if their last card includes a threat, then we could be in trouble. Instead it's going to be a Thought Seize. Goes after our Avatar. Opponent's got one card left, but they do draw from the bobble. So back up to two. Well, we can't really do much here, so we'll just have to say go and hope they don't deal with our Sea Leaf Champion as well. Just a Bloodstained Mire for now. They could flash back a Faithless Looting if they don't have anything relevant to play here. And that's what they do. So they won't be able to play anything else. And Avatar the draw. Could even consider playing Avatar since we can protect it with Vines, or we can go Avatar plus Rancor. Or we could just play the Steel Leaf Champion. And there's reasons to do all these things. So the new version of Death Shadow mainly has this member as a way to deal with Steel Leaf Champion in the deck. They could also go Snapcaster Bolt if we go for the Avatar play. With our opponent only having two cards in hand, I don't mind playing the Steel Leaf and then hoping we get to untap before they try and dismember. Instead, it's just going to be a Gurmag Angler into a Death Shadow, alright, so that's a very good turn for the opponent, being able to play two threats in the same turn. Dungrove Elder's not bad. So what relevant interaction can our opponent have here? They could have a Stubborn Denial or Dismember, those are the cards that come to mind. So I think I kind of like a Rancor on Steelleaf Champion, attack. Opponent's going to be forced to block unless they have Stubborn Denial for Rancor, but then we'll know. They probably block with a Gurmag Angler. Take two, Death Shadow grows to an 8-8, but we still get to play an Avatar. And we get our Rancor back, and an Avatar on the way back with Vines is lethal. So I think we go for it, and if they have Stubborn Denial, then we'll know not to attack here. If they have Dismember, then that's of course the worst case scenario, but we still have the Vines of Vastwood in hand. Unfortunately, for opponent blocks with Gurmag Angler, and we go for the Vines play. We are one point short of having lethal here, since we trample over for 2, plus 4 is 6, put them to 1, and then we would be facing a pretty scary death shadow. So I think we let this happen. Just trample over for 2, and then play avatar. And the fact that we're still at 20 means that our opponent's not really threatening lethal, even with a teamer battle rage. And uh, they can't really afford to attack us without having an answer for avatar. Fatal Push counts as an answer to Avatar, so they must have drawn that for the turn, otherwise it probably would have done at end of turn. So they get in for 8, and now we're in the range where Teamer Battle Rage becomes an issue. Dried Militant to draw, 
So do we go for Dried Militant or do we go for Dungrove Elder? I don't think we're blocking Shadow anyways. If they have Teamer Battle Rage, they have Teamer Battle Rage. And Dungrove Elder just makes for a more resilient threat to have in play, I think. So I'll play the Dungrove. Say go and hope they don't have Battle Rage or another blocker. And then uh, they might not be able to attack us anymore since otherwise we threaten lethal with Rancor and Vines. And then we can start going wide with Dried Militant and then just attack with both creatures. And if they only have the one Death Shadow back to block, they die. Opponent cycles a Street Wraith. And Inquisition of Kozilek is gonna check out our hand. Opponent takes Rancor and we'll see if our opponent attacks us here. We're probably not blocking either way. Alright, so they are attacking. So we would die to a Lightning Bolt, to another Street Wraith to a team or battle rage, but that's the case either way. But if we block, I don't think we can win. So we'll just take 10 and hope for the best. All right, so we're down to two. They could also have another blocker here. Even a Snapcaster Mage does it. And our opponent just concedes, so they did not have anything for the Dungrove Elder, but they tried anyway. All right, so on to sideboarding against a Grixis Death Shadow. This is where we want access to Relic, I think. And could also consider Choke, it's not like the opponent has a ton of lands it taps down, but keeping one or two lands tap down could be enough for Choke to be relevant. It is a 3 mana spell which can be a little slow, so I think we'll just be bringing in two relics, and then what do we take out? Uh, I could see the pump spells being a little weak in this matchup. If our opponent just removes all our creatures then Aspect of Hydra doesn't do much. But I think I like Vines more since it can actually protect our creatures from removal, and Rancor is a nice sticky enchantment that's tends to come back a few times. So this seems fine. And their opponents might get access to a few extra removal spells out of the sideboard, but I don't think their game plan changes much. Alright, this hand seems fine. On the draw, get to lead with Experiment 1. Opponent with Double Bobble and Polluted Delta. So they get a Pseudo Scry here, thanks to the Fetch Land. Steel Leaf Champion also a nice draw, as it'll help us grow or experiment one even more. Opponent getting a Blood Crypt untapped, so we might see our experiment one die here. Nope, opponent just wanted to lose a life for Death Shadow. So their opponent sculpting their hand somewhat with all these Mishra's Baubles plus Fetch Lands. So they could run out a pretty early Gurmag Angler here. Instead, opponent does nothing on turn two, so their life not low enough for Death Shadow and maybe not enough cards in Graveyard for Gurmag Angler yet. So here we have a few interesting options. I kind of like Dried Militants, plus Treat of Village, so next turn we can guaranteed play a Steel Leaf Champion and grow Experiment 1 even further. And it's unclear whether we want to attack here and give the opponent the option of playing a Death Shadow next turn. And the ability from Dried Militant is actually quite relevant versus the Death Shadow deck. Right, and they're gonna Abrade the Dried, but Abrade did not end up in the opponent's graveyard as it got exiled by the Dried's ability. So we could stay back with the experiment one, but I think attacking is probably okay, since their opponent just needs any fetch land essentially to be able to play Death Shadow. And with this creature heavy draw, we can kind of go wide and uh, that way play around Death Shadow. Opponent's at 12, and we'll play a treetop village, say go. And a Thought Scour is going to ensure that they can play Gurmag Angler if they have it. They milled another Death Shadow and a Gurmag Angler, so. I'm betting our opponent's not too happy about that. And a second Blood Crypt, untapped. So Death Shadow would be a 3-3 right now. And it's gonna be a Gurmag Angler instead. So this is gonna block our Experiment 1 pretty well. But we still have some nice tools here. And because it wasn't a Death Shadow, now we're happy that we got our two points in with Experiment 1 last turn. So let's just play Steel Leaf here, I think. Since Dungrove Elder would not grow the Experiment 1. And by going Steel Leaf into Steel Leaf, we not only have creatures that can attack past the Gurmag Angler, but we also grow the Experiment 1 twice. So our opponent could be considering whether they want to deal with the Experiment 1 before the Steel Leaf Champion enters the battlefield. So we can't regenerate the Experiment 1. And we do have quite a few sticky threats now, between Experiment 1 that can be regenerated, Strangle Root Geist with Undying. We have a lot of creatures that can actually block profitably and stick around. Meaning that if our opponent tries to race us, that's not going to work out too well for them unless they have a team or battle rage plus death shadow. And alright, opponent is going for team or battle rage right now, dealing 10 damage. 
So they might have Snapcaster plus the Murbello Rage next turn, instead it's just going to be a Death Shadow. So they probably drew it for the turn, otherwise I imagine they would have played it last turn. Opponent's got one card left in hand. If it's a Snapcaster Mage, then we're in trouble. And let's say we do activate Treat of Village Attack with everyone. If our opponent's last card is not Snapcaster Mage for Teamer Battle Rage or another Teamer Battle Rage for Grimag Angler, then we kind of force our opponent to trade Death Shadow for Steel Leaf Champion, which is a good trade for us. Get in for six, putting the opponent down to two. But the problem is, if they have access to a second Battle Rage, then the Gurmag Angler is lethal on the way back. If we just attack with Steel Leaf Champion, our opponent has to respect a Pump Spell on the Steel Leaf Champion to kill them. So they might block with the Death Shadow anyway. If they don't block with Death Shadow and they take all the damage, then of course Death Shadow is going to be huge and we're going to be in trouble if they do have another Battle Rage. So it's definitely not an easy spot here. The fact that they fired off the first Battle Rage so aggressively makes me think they'll have access to a second one. I think attacking with Steel Leaf is probably fine. And then hopefully they don't have something like uh, Street Wraith as their last card to make Death Shadow into a 7-7, since that would be pretty painful. But our opponent has to respect the possibility of a pump spell here. Maybe we thought too long about it, and now they are not going to respect it, but we'll see. Alright, our opponent does go for the block, and I'm happy with the trade here. Alright, that happened. So, now we have a few options. We can run out another Steel Leaf Champion, which seems quite good here. And if our opponent attacks us with Gurmag Angler, we even have the option of blocking with Experiment 1 and regenerating it. And we're representing quite a bit of damage on the way back, especially with Treetop Village. And we also have Rancor and Strangle Root that can deal quite a bit of damage. So here we just want to make sure not to die to a second Battle Rage. If we were to block with Steel Leaf Champion and they do have a Battle Rage, then we end up losing the Steel Leaf Champion and taking 6, which is not great. So I think I would rather just block with Experiment 1 here and regenerate it. And now a Teamer Battle Rage would not be lethal. And we still keep our two creatures in play. So our opponent needs either removal here or more blockers. And it's going to be a Tassiger, alright, so that's an extra blocker. And they've got one card left in hand. Alright, and they let us untap. A Relic comes a little bit late here. I feel like Rancor on Steel Leaf Champion attack is not a bad play, putting our opponent to 1 if they don't block. And we're happy with the trade since we get a Rancor back. And hopefully their last card is not a dismember. Alright, that works. We could also Strangle Root Geists and attack with everyone, which forces the block with Tassiger. And now I guess they would need specifically Teamer Battle Rage in hand as their last card, since Snapcaster no longer does it. I don't hate that. Since your opponent's not even representing lethal on the way back, unless they have a Bolt or another Battle Rage. So this feels relatively safe. So your opponent trades Tassiger for Steel Leaf. And they did have the Fatal Push as their last card, but that means that uh, they don't have a Battle Rage as their last card, so we're not risking a lethal on the way back. So I don't hate our spot here with Treat of Village and Strangle Root in play. Opponent's attacking with Gurmag Angler. Did they draw another blocker here? Death Shadow would be pretty terrifying. Alright, instead our opponent says go. So we technically have lethal in a variety of ways, either Rancor on Strangle Root or Activate Treetop. But if they have removal or any interaction, then we're dead on the way back, which seems a little too risky. So instead we could go for Rancor on Strangle Root, see what happens. And then we can still Dried Milton plus Prowler on the way back, which seems pretty safe. And if they don't have anything, they're just dead here. Alright, Stubborn Denial, that's fine. So if we had another land, they would die to the Treetop Village here. But I don't mind attacking with the Strangle Root. I guess we could have also played the Milton first to prevent our opponent from keeping the Stubborn Denial in the graveyard. But I think I'm fine putting our opponent to two and then just playing two blockers. And then we can chump Gurmag, hopefully, and attack back for lethal. And a single removal spell does not save them. So we played this game pretty conservatively, trying to play around team or battle rage as best we could. And our opponent's staying back, which is a pretty good sign. So now we can just animate treetop attack with everyone and our opponent needs Snapcaster push, does that do it? 
They'll have two blockers kill a creature, but then they're still taking lethal. So I think they're just dead here if we animate three top. Since I think Snapcaster is the best they can do. And that's still not good enough. And it's going to be a lightning bolt on themselves going out in style. I like it. All right, sweet. So very close game here against Grixis Death Shadow, but we came out on top. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And this hand's okay. Not amazing by any means, but probably keepable. Would have liked to have a one drop in the sand to apply a pressure early, but we'll have to do with ooze into champion. Opponent with turn one mountain. All right, don't mind strangle root here instead of ooze. Wait on the ooze until there's more creatures in the graveyard to devour. Opponent down to 18. And red black. With a turn two devil's play for one. Fair enough. All right. And now Avatar comes into play with a counter on it. I kind of like Avatar keep up vines more than uh, playing Steely here. I think that's okay. Since your opponent appears to be a removal heavy deck. So keeping up vines seems nice. And the next turn we can go Steel Leaf, keep up vines. And Faithless Looting. Alright, so we kind of see the synergy with Flashback here and uh, Looting. Discards Mountain and Ragdo Signet. So your opponent's trying to ramp and cut to ribbons. It's gonna meet vines. Alright, so we've got 7 power in play. And Ooze can also gobble up all these Aftermath and Flashback cards. But here we're just gonna curve out. Play a Prowler, play a Champion. Hope to dodge a Damnation. And our opponent will have a hard time dealing with all our threats here. Hellion Crucible, haven't seen that one in a while. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, so opponent appears to be on a somewhat budget deck as well, which is only fair. So against red-black removal, how do we want to board? Uh, could make a case for Relic of Progenitus, just to have more graveyard interactions, since opponent seems to be pretty heavy on uh, graveyard interactions, and we can always just cycle it. Uh, not sure how good this member is going to be, we didn't see any creatures from the opponent this game. Doesn't mean they don't have any. I could see shaving two aspects against a removal-heavy deck to make room for two relics. And we'll keep this member for now since we don't know what to expect. Could make a case for natural state, it did show us Ragdo Signet, but I think it's a bit too narrow. Alright, how about this one? This sand's pretty weak actually, for opponent just kills the Steel Leaf, the sand doesn't do anything. Don't even know how good this member's gonna be in the matchup. I think we can mulligan. Alright, this is much better. And I'll bottom the dismember since we won a third land. Turn on Mountain again. We'll go turn one, experiment one. Graven Cairns into Ragdo Signets. Alright, let's uh, just curve out here. Sadly, Avatar doesn't pick up a plus one plus one counter, since Avatar, the wording says, as Avatar enters the battlefield. Whereas the experiment one evolve is a trigger. So the timing works out in such a way that the Avatar is already in play before the Experiment 1 picks up the plus one plus one counter, sadly. Ooh, Stone Rain on our forest. I see. Alright, luckily we do have some extra lands we can play here, so Stone Rain not a big concern. But now we have to think about whether we want to play around some sort of sweeper effect from the opponents, commit an extra scavenging ooze, or instead go for Rancor. I don't mind going for Rancor here. It's a bit safer in the face of a sweeper effect, and still puts the same amount of power in play. So your opponent's got access to 4 mana here, and it's gonna be Anger of the Gods. Well, good thing we did not play Scavenging Ooze. Still a pretty big setback here. But at least we get to play Steel Leaf Champion now. And hope they can deal with it. And Anger of the Gods exiling our creatures means we don't have food for Scavenging Ooze. Our opponent with quite a few fancy dual lands in red-black. And it's gonna be a Crux of Fate as their sweeper. Maybe if they have some dragons in their deck or it's just a budget version of Damnation. Alright, so we get to Militant Ooze plus Rancor. Or we can Militant Ooze and eat up 
Steel Leaf Champion with our Ooze. I think I prefer getting Rancor in play. And we'll enchant our uh, Dried Militant here. Since the Ooze is more valuable, probably. Although the effect for Militant could also be useful. Alright, let's hope to dodge another Sweeper. Opponent with two Sweepers so far. Incendiary Command. And of course it got exiled by Dried Militant. And a second Rancor, so now we're just waiting for a creature. I don't think we want to jam Rancor onto Militant when our opponent has all their mana up. Seems a bit risky. So our best draw would probably be something like a Dungrove Elder. Nice, safe uh, target for these Rancors. And it's going to be a Braid, getting rid of Dried Militant. So our opponent with heaps of removal spells. Haven't seen their win condition yet. And an Experiment one. And again, I'm not going to run out Rancor. Just too risky that our opponent kills our creature in response and we don't get our Rancor back. Opponent in the meantime charging up their Molten Slag Heap. And a Terminate on the Experiment 1. Charging up the Slag Heap again. And a Battle Marveler. Alright, makes sense. So that's one of their win conditions. They discarded a Cryptborn Horror and a Cut to Ribbons. And there's Relic a turn late. I think we still play and sacrifice it here, no reason not to. We do get rid of our creatures in case we were to draw an additional Scavenging Ooze, but that's a pretty low cost here compared to exiling the opponent's graveyard. Alright, so a 3-2 Avatar versus a 3-4 Battle and Reveler, but our opponent's got three fresh cards in hand and a pretty big mana advantage. Lightning Bolt kills Avatar. So yeah, I think Dungrove Elder probably wins us a game. Ragdos Charm as well. Gets in for 5, puts us to 10. Not sure why they wanted to Ragdos Charm just to push 2 damage, thanks to Prowess. Alright, time to run out Steel Leaf. And I think we're desperate enough here where we're gonna wanna Rancor right away. And hope that their last card is not another removal spell. Alright, that works. So we've got a 7-4 Steel Leaf Champion versus Battle and Reveler. But they have another Terminate to deal with our Steel Leaf Champion. At least we get back our Rancor. But we take 4 down to 6. And a Vines, which comes a bit late. Well, if we can find a creature now, we can protect it pretty well. But we might be dead before we get to untap here. As our opponent casts Looting, they can flash it back. And then they just need any spell they can cast to make Reveler lethal. And there's Hour of Devastation as well, so our opponent with plenty of sweeper effects. And now a second Bellum Reveler. And a Bolt to finish us off. Alright, so that's game. So how do we want a sideboard for game 3? I think I like our sideboard plan. We could even consider Torpor Orb to shut down Battle Reveler. Maybe that's a bit too cute, but it might be better than an Aspect of Hydra that's gonna rot in our hand anyway. Bring in one Torpor Orb, and I don't think we need anything else. Would like to be on the play. And this hand seems okay. So the only card that's kind of confusing out of the opponent was their Stone Rain, which doesn't seem to complement their game plan in any way. But other than that, they just look like a red-black removal-heavy deck with Reveler as their finisher. And a Spine Rock Knoll. It's also an interesting one. We're just gonna curve out here. Hope to dodge a bunch of sweeper effects. Alright, Vines is not bad. But I think we're just curving out here. Anger of the Gods does not deal with Steel Leaf Champion, plus we can save Experiment 1 from it now. And they can't cast their 5 mana sweepers yet next turn, so... This feels pretty safe. And then next turn we have Vines as maybe a finisher. And they do have the Anger of the Gods, we do get to regenerate Experiment 1 at least. But sadly Strangle Root got exiled, so it doesn't come back with Undying. 
and double vines means we have lethal here. All right, sweet. So pretty fast game three, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand's not perfect. We're missing a two drop and a third land, but I think it's probably keepable. Opponent with Inspiring Vantage turn one, so it could be burn, as we see Grim Lava Mancer, which is quite good against us. Um, I think we still run out Experiment 1 over Dismembering the Lava Mancer. Steel Leaf Champion's pretty decent since it matches up pretty well against our 3 damage burn spells, but I fully expect our Experiment 1 to bite the dust here. And losing 4 life to Dismember is kind of sketchy, but it might be a necessity here to deal with the Lava Mancer. And it's going to be Lightning Helix to take out Experiment 1, opponent attacks for 1. That's fine. Another Steel Leaf, alright. I think we're dismembering here, no reason to let our opponent on tap. So we did take 4, which is not ideal in this matchup. But with triple Steel Leaf we might be able to outrace our opponent. And they drew Goblin Guide for the turn, which is unfortunate. But it did find us a land at least. Alright, let's run out Steel Leaf. And I think we will be blocking the Goblin Guide here. And the next turn we can go Steel Leaf plus Aspect. Alright, Skull Crack to the face, down to 10. But if our opponent just draws one or two too many lands here, we might be okay. No attacks from the Guide, so they're not even trying to represent anything. We'll play another Steel Leaf. That way Aspect deals additional damage here if we were to play it. But we probably want to save Aspect until we get our third Steel Leaf Champion down, at which point it'll deal 9 additional damage out of nowhere, which sounds pretty good. Alright, Boar's Charm put us to 6. So they could kill us here if they have 2 3 damage burn spells in a row. And it looks like they do have one of them. Skull Crack down to 3. So our opponent has plenty of outs here, but I think, let's see, next turn we're dealing... 10 plus 9 is 19, so we do have our opponent dead next turn, under most circumstances. So it comes down to the opponent's top deck here. And what's it gonna be? Another creature is not good enough, so it has to be a 3 damage burn spell. Alright, opponent lets us untap. And we're just gonna play Steel Leaf Champion. Guess we could have played a tree top village there. Since we had the extra mana anyway. We'll attack. Opponent can block with Goblin Guide. And this aspect of Hydra is lethal. So that's plus 9 plus 9. 19 damage total. And our opponent scoops it up. Oof, that was a close one. So this is a matchup where we get access to Feed the Clan, which is nice. Take out those dismembers. And I think that's it. Don't really want anything else. So our opponent will be bringing in Deflecting Palms and Path to Exile, presumably. So those cards we need to keep in mind. I don't think we can keep this one, just the one creature. Need more action. Alright, this is better. And I don't think we need a fourth land. So last game our opponent had Grim Lava Mancer as their one mana creature. This time they have Swiss Spear, which is quite a bit better in the early turns. So just one damage from a Swiss Spear, they could not enable Prowess, or maybe did not want to. So what do they have here? Maybe an Eidolon? Nope, a Rift Bolt suspended. And another Rift Bolt suspended. Alright, so next turn is gonna hurt. So we could even consider just jumping with the Strangle Root guys here, I don't hate that. And Strangle Root is also pretty resilient to removal spells. And grows the Experiment one, I think we do want to attack with the Experiment one but we'll keep back Strangle Root to block the Swiss Spear. And then next turn Avatar is going to be pretty big thanks to both Strangle Root and Experiment 1 having counters, and it's going to help grow the Experiment 1 even more. So we've got a decent start here. We'll see where they point the Rift Bolts. They could also try and kill both creatures here, but usually Burn wants to go face. All right, they are taking out the Experiment 1 and then going face with a second one. And the second Swiss Spear. And I think I'm okay blocking the Swiss Spear here to prevent 3 damage, grow our 
Strangle Root Geist, which is nice with our avatar coming down next turn. And our opponent suspends another Rift Bolt. Alright, Forest, not the best draw. Let's run out Avatar. And do we attack with Strangle Root at this point? We probably do. Do want to pressure our opponent, and we do have Aspect in hand, which can be a nice finisher. Our opponent might point a Rift Bolt at Avatar, in which case we'll use uh, Aspect to save it. And then kind of invalidate our opponent's attackers. Alright, Rift Bolt does go after Avatar, so we'll try and save it here and hope that they don't have another removal spell in hand. So far so good. So I've got an 8-7 Avatar with 3 damage on it and a Lava Spike to put us to 12, but they still can't really attack us here unless they want to throw away Swiss Spear to deal 3 damage. Suppose they could have another instant to enable Prowess, in which case they would trade, but we still definitely want to block here, otherwise we might just die to a Boros Charm. So our opponent's taking their time, they're not sure whether they want to attack, which kind of indicates that they might not have any instants left in hand. We're definitely blocking. And then we'll see if they do have another burn spell here. It looks like they do. And it's going to be a skull crack. fair enough. So we're down to 5 and traded Avatar for Swiss Spear, so we're not in the best of positions. Since at this point if we attack with Strangle Root and we die to any 3 damage burn spell, they top deck. And only a 3 top the draw for the turn. So what happens if we stay back with Strangle Root? We might be able to trade for Swiss Spear. And then next turn we can start attacking with 3 top Village. Don't love it, but I think attacking here is a bit too aggressive with their opponent still at 10 life. They have just too many outs here that kill us. And we're just hoping to top deck something like a Dungrove Elder, Steel Leaf Champion, just something big. And I guess if we find a Vines of Vastwood and our opponent doesn't block our two creatures, we could also deal lethal next turn. Instead it's a Goblin Guide, but they're gonna stay back on defense. And another Forest to draw. Alright, we're just playing Forest Sango, so we're definitely flooding out quite a bit here. And these very aggressive matchups can often come down to which player draws more lands than the other. It looks like our opponent bricked this turn as well. And Dried Militant to draw. Problem here is that if we attack with Treetop Village, then our opponent can just double block, which is not ideal. But now we might be able to attack with our Strangle Root Geist at least and offer the trade for Guide, which seems fine. Despite us having cards like Aspect of Hydra in our deck, which wants us to save our Strangle Roots in play. Opponent might also take it, since they're still at 10. Our opponent does take the trade, that's fine. Which now unlocks our Treat of Village as an attacker. We'll play a Dryad, play a land, since if we do top deck Dungrove Elder, we want him to be as large as possible. And Grim Lava Mancer is an issue, since that's just gonna kill us in a couple turns. Alright, so now we have to be as aggressive as possible and hope to top deck well. Yep. Alright. Probably just attack with both at this point. Opponent trades Swiss Spear for Militant, that's okay. We're still dead to any 3 damage burn spell here. But we technically still have an out here if our opponent just draws a land here. We attack with Treetop and they don't block. And we top deck a Vines of Vastwood, then we're dealing 7. Alright, that's a land. Well, we definitely drew our fair share of lands this game. Don't think we could have done much different. Makes up for our nice draw in the previous game, and our opponent's actually blocking with the Lava Mancer, since they're afraid of uh, Vines of Vastwood. They might use a Lava Mancer to take out uh, Treat of Village here, or they might go face. We'll see. And it looks like they're going face, which makes sense. Otherwise, uh, Vines of Vastwood would be quite a blowout. So they're putting themselves in a position where they can top deck any 3 damage burn spell to win the game. But getting the Lava Mancer off the board was actually good for us. Alright, so we just need our opponent to brick for two turns. Not super likely. What is this? 3 mana for Rift Bolt. Hard cast to the face. Alright, that's unfortunate. We didn't draw very well this game. Not much we could have done, I don't think. And do we change anything? I guess we could also consider Gutshot specifically from Grim Lava Mancer, but that seems way too narrow. So we'll just run it back. Would like to be on the play. And this hand's not very good. 5 lands is definitely more than we want. Ooze is probably gonna die 
to a burn spell, and then we're left with Steel Leaf with a bunch of lands. I don't want the previous game to affect our decision too much here, but I don't think we can keep a 5 lander. Alright, this is a bit better. Dungrove Elder, definitely one of our best cards. And we'll keep the land on top. Opponent with a Suspended Rift Bolt on one. So dodging a creature was nice. And next turn we get to play a Dungrove Elder, which is going to be difficult for the opponent to answer. Do still have to keep Deflecting Palm in mind, of course. So let's see if they kill the Experiment 1 or go face. So they're going after Experiment 1, we could save it with Fines. That might be okay. Next turn it's going to be a 2-2, and it's going to take a while before we get to deploy the Vines otherwise. Plus we have Aspect of Hydra, which rewards us for having extra Devotion in play. So I don't hate it. And I guess we'll cast it with Kicker, not that it really matters. Alright, so we save Experiment 1. If this Dungrove Elder was something like a Steelleaf Champion, then I would keep Divines in hand, I think. But given that we specifically have Dungrove in hand, it feels like keeping the Experiment 1 is going to benefit us. And there's an Eidolon, which is the first siding. So we'll play Dungrove Elder, trigger Eidolon. It's not even clear whether we want to attack with the Experiment 1, but it's probably fine. And our opponent takes it instead, that's the best case scenario, I think. Lava Spike, opponent takes two, we take three. And Eidolon staying back. Alright, play Forest, grow the Elder. So now we might only want to attack with the Dungrove Elder. Keep Experiment 1 on defense. That seems okay. Since I don't think we want to trade Experiment 1 for Eidolon, we'll say go. And our opponent's gonna need multiple copies of Lining Helix or Deflecting Palm to swing the race back in their favor. Tapped Vantage, and Eidolon stays back. Alright, so here we have an interesting question, whether we want to play the Forest, since if our opponent does have Deflecting Palm, attacking with a 5-5 Elder is kind of sketchy. So I think just attacking with a 4-4 Elder might be okay, and then we'll play Militant, say go. Alright, opponent's jumping, that's fine too. Since now we get to play Militant for free, and they're gonna helix our face, that's fine. They're doing it now in case they top deck Grim Lava Mancer and they need extra food in their graveyard, which makes sense. So now the question is, do we play the forest or do we keep it? Now their opponent's on 12, I think it's okay to play the forest, but we'll have to be extra mindful of Deflecting Palm here. Might not even attack with our Dungrove Elder, we'll see. And our opponent's being very reactive here, which might indicate Deflecting Palm. So let's say we attack with just uh, two power creatures, or I guess we can play Steel Leaf to grow the experiment one, attack for five, put them to seven, and then next turn we just attack with everyone. That might be okay. So let's play the Steel Leaf. This aspect of Hydra now also deals six additional damage, but again it's pretty sketchy in the face of Deflecting Palm. So we'll see what the opponent does here. It's gonna Lightning Helix experiment one. We could save it with aspect of Hydra. That seems okay. And then this is going to be an 8 power creature. And then we could just attack with Dungrove Elder Dried Militant. Alright, so that worked. I guess what I didn't consider is by casting the Aspect in response. Experiment 1 does not get the plus 1 plus 1 counter from Evolve since it's bigger than the Steel Leaf Champion when the Steel Leaf Champion enters the battlefield. If we attack them with an 8 power Experiment 1, they could put us to 4 which seems too risky here, so I'm just gonna attack with Dungrove Elder and Militant. And at 12 life we're pretty safe, and we'll see next turn how we want to attack, since we do still have lethal if our opponent just deflecting palms one of our 5 power creatures. They did find Grim Lava Mancer, that's okay. And another aspect of Hydra, alright, so now I think we can just attack with everyone, opponent might deflecting palm, the Steel Leaf or the Dungrove, and then Aspect can still deal lethal. And the major reason I wanted to save the Experiment 1 is that it gave us a small enough attacker that can attack safely into a Deflecting Palm, but I'm unsure it could be that we should have just let the Experiment 1 die and keep the Aspect for later. Put on Chum's Dungrove Elder, but we're still dealing lethal damage, and it's going to be a path to Exile instead. So if we were to Aspect of Hydra on the Militant, for example, 
So that would be six additional power. Eight. So if they do have Deflecting Palm, we could die to a top deck Boros Charm, but that's the only out. I think that's worth going for it here. They need exactly Deflecting Palm into Boros Charm, and if they just kill the Dried Militant, then we just attack for lethal next turn. And our opponent did not have it, so we managed to beat Burn in three games. want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.